All right, now a little pit stop here at PCI Option ROM attacks on our way to flash write protection and attacks. So first, a brief history of OROM attacks by this guy. Now I can't wear my hat normally during class because otherwise you can't see my raised eyebrow and forehead wrinkles, which communicate so much information, which is the whole point of putting my face in these videos in the first place. So, 2007, John Heisman, implementing and detecting a PCI rootkit. So this bit talk basically was about using option ROMs in order to infect the kernel with a rootkit. A relevant excerpt being the fact that he talks about how PCI cars often provide tools that can be reused, can be used to flash the card from within Windows, and that older tools would be run from within DOS, but those wouldn't work within the DOS emulation because of things like the IO privilege level, IOPL, that thing you learned about in Architecture 2001, which restricts port IO access. Port IO mapped bars from PCI devices were probably used on some of these older cards. 2012, Snare had looked at how he could use option ROMs in order to infect Mac systems, infect their kernel. So in this talk, he talked about normal bootkit type attacks where you infect the bootloader and hop your way into the kernel. He talked about option ROM attacks to do the same thing. And he talked about EFI attacks. And basically, while option ROM was seven out of 10, EFI attacks were 11 out of 10. And that's where we're trying to get with these, getting to the flash access control portion of this class. In 2013, Pierre Chifflier talked about using option ROMs in order to, again, bounce your way down to the operating system. This is a good diagram that sort of indicates, again, that principle of they who run first run best. This is a standard sort of UEFI view of the world in different phases of boot. And you can see that the option ROM runs earlier than the operating system and consequently can infect it. In 2013, a student paper by Saul St. John at the University of Wisconsin at Madison had presented a very interesting thing indeed. Now, this was before Thunderstrike, which you might have heard of. This was before PCI Leech, which you may have heard of. And basically, this was Thundergate, and he set up a website, thundergate.io. Unfortunately, nobody really heard about this until much later because he didn't present it at any conferences. Now, the important thing about this work is that he released a tool at thundergate.io, which is still available on GitHub. And this tool allowed you to rewrite the option ROM on a Apple Thunderbolt Ethernet adapter and also rewrite the firmware of the Broadcom chip that runs on this. And so rewriting the option ROM allowed the option ROM type attacks that we talk about in this section. And rewriting the firmware allowed for actually doing arbitrary DMA attacks, which are the type of things that tools like PCI Leech do. So this actually provides an extremely powerful experimental platform that you can use to both understand option ROM attacks and DMA attacks. In 2014, Trammell Hudson presented Thunderstrike, which was using the option ROM on a Apple Thunderbolt Ethernet adapter to actually infect EFI itself. So recall that Snare had talked about using option ROMs to infect the operating system itself and had tried to infect the EFI, but ultimately wasn't able to do that. Well, Trammell used the option ROM to end up infecting the EFI itself. Now, if you ask me, Trammell sort of missed out by using a ACDC reference of Thunderstruck for this Thunderstrike work, when instead he could have used 90s not a Thor Thor Thunderstrike. His name was Thunderstrike, Eric Masterson, but oh well, so it goes. All right, then in 2015, Trammell, myself, and Corey Kallenberg teamed up to use what Trammell knew about infecting Macs with what we knew about infecting PCs. So specifically, we showed that Macs were vulnerable to a bunch of different vulnerabilities that we had previously disclosed for PCs. They hadn't got fixed on Macs, things like the Darth Venomous attack that Corey and Rafal Wojcik worked on. And so we basically showed you could use these in combination with the option ROM attacks that uh, Trammell had previously done to, again, reinfect the actual firmware, the proper EFI of a Mac system. And finally, the most interesting thing is that in 2017, WikiLeaks released information about CIA capabilities to infect systems. Amongst that information was a particular attack called Sonic Screwdriver. And this had a user manual from November 2012, 
which was seven months after Snare's original talk at CISCAN in April of 2012. And basically, this was the CIA's weaponized form of Snare's attack. It basically used a Apple Thunderbolt Ethernet adapter with a custom malicious option ROM in order to infect Apple systems at the EFI level and to bypass things like firmware passwords, which are frequently used in order to restrict the capability to boot off external media from which other attacks can be launched. So that's a quick overview of some of the option ROM attacks that have been documented in research and in the wild, as it were, although I don't think anyone's actually caught this in the wild. So now let's go understand what option ROMs actually are. 